For those of you who are familiar with Rectus Journal, there's a new book out in 2020. It's called Rectus Picture Book. The author Carrie Smith is the illustrator of several best-selling activity books, including Rectus Journal, This Is Not a Book, How to Be an Explorer of the World, and many more. She spends her time making things out of discarded stuff she finds. She lives in Western Massachusetts with her husband, Jefferson Pitcher, and their two children. Did you know that a book is not able to be itself without you? A book becomes more beautiful and alive when it is explored regularly. What some people call wrecking, others might call living. The truth is books are not meant to sit on shelves. They are meant to be used and read and carried and taken on adventures. A book on a shelf is not living the life it is meant to live. Please help bring this book to life. There is no time to waste. This book needs you. Things to look for in this book. The name Benjamin, a few carrots, a blue nose, a bow tie, a briefcase, a compass, an orange triangle, a feather, a telescope, a red letter E, a green lid, a pink book, a yellow arrow, an astronaut, a green letter R, and a yellow park bench. For Tilden and Ida, may you always create magic worlds using whatever you have. Not only books, but copies of books have their fates. Walter Benjamin. Note to the reader, user. Some adults will be very uncomfortable about this book. You'll soon understand why. If an adult is reading this to you right now, give them a pat on the arm and tell them it will be okay. Wrecking isn't always a bad thing. Books like to be read and used. The more actively, the better. On the page to the left is everything you need to know about the book, where it was published, the copyright, who it's published by, where it was printed. Wreck This Picture Book by Carrie Smith. Blump. This is the sound of a book sitting. It is just a lump on a table. Bored. It doesn't have anything to do. It is sitting and waiting for someone to come along. Why does it sit alone? A long time ago, someone, probably an adult, made up some rules about books. Probably this guy. The rules of book reading. Number one, don't throw the book. Number two, don't fold the pages. Number three, don't be rough with the book. Number four, don't draw on the book. And number five, read quietly to yourself. As you can imagine, these rules made some people very nervous around books, afraid that they might do the wrong thing. And so rather than risk doing the wrong thing, they made sure to do as little as possible with books. They would enclose it in a glass case, put do not touch on it, and the book would be a very sad book. Is a book really a book if it isn't being used? What if I told you that Books have a secret wish to move, to dance, to go on adventures, to be read in as many ways as possible. Every book has a wish to be read and held, flung and slung, played and frayed, used and loved. Thank goodness you have come along right at this exact moment. The book needs you to help make its wish come true. Did you know that a book is not able to be itself without you? You help to make it into something. You bring your experiences, your ideas, and your imagination. A book can be different every time you read it because you can be different. You can be silly, happy, sad, or quiet. Shake this way and that way. Rub your hands here. Where should we start? You might need to shake it to wake it up. Now close your eyes and rub your hands on this page. Can you feel it waking up? Faster. I think this is working. Yes. 
Touch the page again. What does it feel like? Touch a page with your fingers. Touch a page with your nose. Your elbow. How about your toes? How can you play with the pages? What if you fold down some corners? Try rolling this page up. Yes. You could do some fancy folds to make this page stand up a little. Look at the colors on this page. Did you know that colors can vibrate? Does it look like these colors are moving? Try blinking your eyes. This can shake the book a little. Now flip the pages. Listen to the sound that makes. Can you make soft sounds? Little sounds? Feathery sounds? The smallest sounds in the universe? Can you squint your ears to hear better? Tap here, poke here, tap here, knock here, tap here, do a fist bump here, knock here. Pretend you are the wind blowing through the pages. Blow on them to turn them. How many different sounds can you make with the book? Try all of these. Flick here, poke here, knock here, bump your elbow here. Smell the book. What does it smell like? Can reading make you think of smells? Could you add a smell to the book? The park, the yellow bench, pine forest, hiding bush, my favorite tree, backyard, home. Good flower smells, pine smell, secret reading spot, bird's nest, walnut shells. Take it outside, read it under a tree, in a secret hiding spot while you are on an adventure. What does it smell like where you are? Flavor generator. Do books have a flavor? What do they taste like? Could you add a flavor? Now that we have woken up all of our senses, how about going on some adventures? This book seems ready to explore new lands. Can you give it an outfit of some kind? Maybe some sunglasses so it can see things better in the daylight. This is a book jacket. What if you could make the book fly? Oh, yes. Now we are talking. Ah, everybody's favorite. Find a way to wear the book. This book loves to go with you everywhere. Please note, this space is reserved for a party. Only dancing, singing, and general merriment allowed. What if you have a party for the book? This is also a good time for dancing. Bump, drop, spin. The top secret spy kit. Secret message. If you find this note, please leave a note for me somewhere in this book. Hide a secret message in the book. Something you want the next reader to know. Hide the book in a secret spot that only you know about. Then go on a secret mission to find it. What if a storm blew in? What if you are the storm? What if you move and jump and bounce as fast as you can with the book? You can make waves. Pretend you are reading the book upside down. Wait, how many different positions can you read it in? Try to do at least 10. What if you tie a scarf around it and make it into a present and then carry it around with you all day? or pretend it is a secret book that only you can read. This book can be anything. What if you could really make the book come alive? I just had an idea. If you want something to grow, you plant a seed. What if you could try that? It could be an imaginary seed drawn by you or a real seed. You are this rock. Be like a rock tumbling down a hill. Roll while holding the book. Can you do a somersault? Can you roll the book by itself? How do you make a book run? How about a hug? You can tell a well-loved book by how wrecked it is. How does this one look now? Do you know they call a book that is old-looking dog-eared? It usually means that the edges are worn, the cover is grubby. How did you do? Does the book need to rest? Yes. Turn to the next page. 
No, turn to the front of the book and begin again. Do not disturb. Time for a rest. Come back in a few hours. Thank you. It's a new day. Shall we begin again? What will today bring for you in the book? It looks like you have become a really good team. And there are so many ways to spend time with the book. More things to look for in this book. The word pull, a yellow flower, a pink arrow, a green circle, a dragonfly, some green peas, a red house, a blue button, a yellow triangle, a telescope, some fire, some grass, a yellow nose, a mailbox. Shake well before opening. The removable cover on the book has how to make your own cork dolls. It comes with the instructions. Some items you will need are some wine corks, a pen or some markers, some nails, paper clips, fabric or paper scraps, washi tape, acorn caps, bottle caps, wool or yarn, some watercolor paint, scissors, needle nose pliers, a small hammer, that's optional, glue, and some wire cutters. The instructions. Number one, make the arms. You're going to measure about five-eighths of an inch from the top of the cork. Number two, push a nail through to the other side. Number three, pull the nail out with the pliers. Number four, straighten out a paper clip. Using the wire cutters, cut the paper clip to about three inches long. Number five, push it through the hole made with the nail and out the other side. Number six, using the needle nose pliers, bend the ends of the wire like this. Then you're gonna bend the arms down. Number seven, make the legs. Push two nails into the bottom of the cork. Make sure they are even like this. Number eight, make the face. If your cork has a lot of printing on it, you will need to cover it up with paint before you draw the face. Once it's dry, you can draw a face using a pen or marker. Number nine, now for the fun part. Decorate your doll using the paper and fabric bits. This will create the clothing. Cut strips and glue them to the back of the doll. You can now add anything you want in step 10. Wool for hair, rosy cheeks, a tiny scarf, a little bag, a tiny book, an acorn cap hat, wings, a tail, a crown, a cape, a helmet, some big ears. And then you're going to push the arms up, put glue on the back for that part. Now that you have a character, you can make a place for them to live. What about a city made of books? I'm starting my cork doll. Put the nails in for the feet. Put the straightened paper clip in for the arms. I added some yarn for the hair. I cut some fabric scraps and made clothes for the cork doll. And I painted on the eyes, nose, and mouth. And this is what they look like when they're all finished. And that's it for the book. You get a book and an activity with it. If you're looking to buy as a gift or just were wondering what the book was all about, if you are familiar with the other series. If you make a cork doll of your own, let me know in the comments what you thought of it and you can share your pictures of it if you would like.